All right, guys, here it is. It's done. Well, done enough for me. Put it that way. All right, so let's go in this 2019 Allegro Red. Now, the first thing I'm going to show you here at the front door has nothing to do with any of the work we did. It's going to be this seat. I don't know if you can see the condition of this seat. I don't know what materials Tiffin bought, but this has been a very common problem on a lot of Tiffin uh, coaches. And so I'm kind of a little upset by that because that had nothing to do with anything that we did on this motorhome. That being said, this is a beautiful coach. So let's get a quick little layout of it. There's four slide outs, two in the front. So you got the front slide out here on the driver's side and the other one and the passenger side. And there's two more in the bedroom. So there's actually quite a bit of room in here. I'm sure uh, you guys are kind of sick of seeing my mug, but there's an incredible amount of walking around room in here. So it's pretty impressive. Now there is day night shades on all the windows and doors. So even the entry door has a day night shade. Uh, there is solid cherry wood cabinetry throughout. I don't know if you guys saw, should have saw that rebuilt. The dash area has a pretty nice setup right here. Now I have the jacks down. So if I were to turn the keys on, we're gonna hear a horrible uh, noise. But it does have the triple vision uh, cameras. So you can get all the camera views right there. Go back to the center. And it has a Kenwood deck on it. Kenwood deck's Bluetooth. And although it doesn't have a smart wheel, it does have cruise control and everything you would want on a normal bus. And it does have hydraulic leveling, which I, I really prefer over any air leveling anyways. Now this is not all electric. It does have propane on it, but it does have a residential refrigerator. So the residential refrigerator is going to need power all the time. So it does have a small solar panel on the roof, which I, which of course I had to replace. And it did replace, so it is new. Right here, this is going to be the inverter controller. So it's a 2000 watt inverter. Uh, we'll go see it in the basement here shortly. Uh, this is a nice uh, remote panel. Uh, a lot of times Winnebago gives you, or some manufacturers give you a smaller one. It's very square. It doesn't make any sense. It has three buttons on it. It's kind of difficult to use. This one has a lot of different uh, functionalities to it. So I like this remote panel a lot better. The uh, front TV, it's really nice, hello. Uh, other than that, really not too much to see in here. This is just gonna be storage over the, in the cabinetry. Then here is where the satellite controller is, right there for the traveler on the roof. Again, I had to replace that because reasons. Uh, you'll have to watch the other videos to find out why I had to replace that. And there's just going to be the AB switch between over-the-air antenna or park cable. Now, other than that bad seat on the passenger seat, it's in basically brand new condition. The armrests are adjustable armrests. It does have a step cover that'll come out. And uh, this one does have a footrest on it, too. So that's a nice feature to have. I just wish the fabric wouldn't have failed. Throughout the uh, motorhome, you're always going to find a lot of USB. So they gave us a lot of USB connections. So even this is 12 volt USB. This is actually uh, input to the radio with USB. And then over here we have another USB on the dash. So there's a lot of USB connections, and that's just not that's just in the dash area. We have a map light, step cover, awning light on the for the awning, and the passenger fan. This is all just going to be normal storage, really nothing spectacular to see in there. This dinette, I'm not a fan of these dinettes. I won't deny it. I, I think dinettes are not the greatest things in the world. But it does have storage in, underneath. And then this tabletop has a pretty standard collapsible tabletop. So if you push down, you can put the cushions over the top, the back cushions, and it becomes a bed. So this one could actually sleep. So the dinette could turn into a bed, but that would be my my backup backup if we really wanted to have anybody sleep it in here because over here is this sofa and this sofa completely is a king size hide a bed. So with the cushions out of the way, you would just roll it out like a normal bed and flip it out. So it's actually a pretty good sized bed. A big bed and then you just plug it in and you can actually inflate it right here uh, you have to uh 
then with that plugged in you can just go ahead and you can air it up so that actually turned this hide a bed into a very comfortable guest bed and the nice thing about this and unlike uh the dinette with that bed set up you haven't really uh made the uh the, the motorhome unusable so you can still use a, the the table you can still use a galley you still walk around it there's still ample room so it's not too difficult to use that as a bed so it's pretty nice and it's a comfortable bed too With that done that put back away becomes pretty nice there's also going to be a recliner in this position so that recliner is not mounted you can just go ahead and put reposition wherever you want in the motorhome it's just going to store right there like i said there's usbs everywhere there's even usbs on the walls right there and of course this is probably the nicer area you have the fireplace down below which is really nice just for ambiance you turn on but it's also going to be a nice space heater that's my favorite features about them right above is going to be the tv so this is going to be the main TV. Of course, you can't see that TV driving down the road because there's a slide in the way. So you still have the front TV you could watch. Of course, the driver shouldn't watch it. Just the passengers. But if you come into the galley, this is really high-end, uh, nice, solid surface material right here. And like I said, all the cabinetry is, is uh, solid wood. So that's a pretty big upgrade. A lot of uh, entry-level diesels are going to have solid wood cabinet doors, but the cabinets themselves will be just, just be... Uh, fake uh, wood same with the fascias right here it's all gonna be solid wood right here uh, this is the kind of like fabric inserts it's a really nice feature the so the sink itself they're not very deep sinks uh, but there's two of them I really wish we'd all just go to a single big sink but there's a beautiful little faucet right there it's got the pull-out feature Now this is a window back here, even though it's got a nice uh, glass inlaid uh, backsplash, that window has a power shade on it. The power shade you actually do right here. So you can raise and lower it right there. That's going to be the only power shade in the entire motorhome. It does have a convection oven microwave above, and this is a really nice stovetop. I didn't expect to see a stovetop this nice in a kind of an entry level diesel so you, you have the three burners with the middle burner is kind of a big burner Just bring it to the light position push and hold the igniter oh you have to hold it down a little bit longer all right there you go so it's got it's not auto light but you don't have to use a lighter at all you don't have to use a rotating light i've i'm really been quite happy with the fury on uh, stove tops and and ovens and even if it's, if you can't see tiffin added a a chrome trim all the way around there they didn't have to add that. It's a very, very subtle feature. You can barely see it unless you're looking for it. So it's pretty impressive that they did that. Now, of course, there's sink covers and stove covers, and these always become a problem driving down the road or when you're using it. But you have a storage for them down right below. These two big drawers underneath. Uh, you can see that it still has the owner's manual. Everything's in it. So that's going to come with it, and that's going to be where the, uh, the front furnace is down below. Right here's that residential refrigerator. So I've been having it running for a little bit, so it's nice and cold in there. I've got some water in there. I'm so thirsty. And it's got the big pull-out drawer down below. So even though this kind of looks like it's a full wall slide up from the bedroom all the way to the front, it's not. It's just a, a slide up from this position all the way to about where the refrigerator is. That's a partition wall. That's not part of the slide up. So I do like that because I don't really like full wall slide outs. There is a galley vent right here, and of course all these lights, I didn't point out, these are all uh, LEDs. The galley vents you can control from uh, the panel right there, or actually from here too. So you can do it from, from there. I, I just closed it. Let me go ahead and open it back up again. My favorite feature of this entire motorhome, honestly, is the ceiling. This is like an entry-level diesel. I mean, I know it's not entry-level, but it's not a high-end luxury diesel. And it's a short one, but that's a really nice ceiling that they put in there. These vents right here, these are like laser cut stainless steel. Uh, you can adjust them, and then the filters are going to be on this side where the air filter is going to be. You take the nut off, you can change out. You can 
clean out the air filters themselves. And it's hard to see, but it is back. It's not hard to see, but the lights themselves are backlit where the ceiling panels are. So it does do that cascade where you don't have direct lighting right into your eyes. I'm also a pretty big fan of this floor plan because you have the galley and then the bathroom right, right, right across from it. It's not like you're living in a big long hallway that a lot of those uh, full wall slide outs are going to give you. It, it, it's, it's pretty decent space in here for, I think this is a 34 foot coach. So they, they did pack a lot and I really like this floor plan. Here we go to the bathroom right here. My biggest takeaway is this is kind of a, a, a small shower. It's more than big enough for me and it does have a seat. So that's step up into it. If I come back in, if I were to step straight up, I didn't hit my head on this at all. Now, if I were to step straight out, I will hit my head and that hurt a little bit. But again, I'm six foot, so there's still ample room. Now right here, this is something Tiffin does too that I like. This is a skylighter right above us. So if I, ah! So if I open that up, you can see there is more room in there, but skylights let in a lot of heat and a lot of light. So it's nice to be able to shut that off. It's a nice feature. So this is a nice surround. It's a nice fiberglass surround. So it's easy to clean, easy to maintain, easy to fix. And this is a solid surface, uh, Corian type uh, little soap dish in there. Now, don't forget, this is a small diesel, so space is limited. The toilet's going to be right here. It's a smaller toilet, but it's good enough for what we need it to be. And there is, again, ample room all the way around it. So this is me uh, sitting on it. We got room over here. I got lots of room over here, so a lot of knee space. Just a little cubby hole right there. Another one under the sink for storage. And they did put a nice sink in here. A lot of times you just get a tiny little uh, sink, but you actually get some countertop space in here. And even more storage right here. They really gave you a lot of storage in the tiny little area. More storage even above. So this is a nice feature to have. Um, I don't know about the rest of everybody else, but I really prefer a normal sink like this. Those vessel sinks are pretty, but they also are not very... Uh, not a lot of fun to use and work around. It's nice to just have a normal sink. Now, if we go past the, uh, the refrigerator right here, I didn't point it out. You do have uh, two pull-out pantries, which is pretty nice. Ample room for you back there. Store lots in there. So again, there's a lot of storage space in there between the, the pantry, the two big drawers, under the sink, more drawers there, and the cabinet right there. So pretty impressed with the amount of storage that you're getting inside of a pretty short diesel. Uh, this is going to be the electrical center. That's part of that spider smart system. See that? Yeah, there it is. And 110 breakers are down below. A little bit of hidden space right above, more storage right in there. You have the pocket door, which is going to be a single rate big pocket door. So I really like having a one door and not the double doors because those double doors always, uh, they always bind up. But one big door is easy. Then it does lock into place. I'll try to take you through this panel real fast. I'm not a big fan of these touchscreen controls. I really just, I like rocker switches. But that's not where the industry is anymore. If you go to the home screen, you can check, you can do your, your common lights, that galley shade I showed you about, you can turn the water pump on and off and your monitor panel's right there. You can check your battery voltages on your chassis battery in your house. You can start and stop the generator right there. This is gonna be the water heater. Now the water heater is a 10 gallon suburban water heater. You can do with propane or electric. And it'll actually be your thermostat so it'll tell you how hot it is right now. So it's pretty hot in here. I can't run the ACs or else you guys can't hear me. Now you can go to subheadings right here. So you can go to all the different lights you can control. Your thermostat's gonna be for your rear AC and your front AC and also for your furnace. And they're also heat pumps. So there's a lot packed into here. Uh, the gears is not settings. It's just gonna be more mechanical features. So you, you can control the ceiling fan right in there from here, or you can do it from the bed. So I could turn it on high and there's a ceiling fan going. Again, you can do the uh, the galley shade right here uh, and then the, 
the bathroom and the galley fan you can control again. If I go to the slides, that's not a droid. Those are the slide outs, so you can control the two rear slide outs. Because the front slide outs, Tiffin really likes to hide these switches. I don't know why they do this. I, I, I understand it. That way you don't hit your your uh, slide with your with your seat, but if you don't know where they're at, you'll never find them. The passenger front slide is going to be on this switch on the side of the, uh, the, so, uh, the, the seat. And of course, the driver's side front slide out is going to be on the driver's side on the side of the seat. That way you can make sure the seats are out of the way. It would definitely be your fault if you damage your seat from the slide outs because you'd be right at the seats anyways. This last little one is the settings one. This is, uh, oh, it's a model 33AA. That's good, I didn't know that. Nice. Now we'll just come out here to the bedroom. So the bedroom has the other two slide outs, the driver's uh, bedroom slide and the passenger bedroom slide. These are both Schwintex. More drawers. So there is storage under the bed here. Let's see if I can do it one-handed. I did it one-handed, we did it. So there is storage. In fact, pretty ample storage underneath there. Ooh. There's some more of those USB connectors I was telling you about, so you can do that almost everywhere. There's some bed light uh, switches right here, and you have your sconce lights. Again, these are LEDs underneath. You turn on and off from underneath. More storage right above, and again, all solid wood cabinetry. If we look over on this side, another USB connection. And the furnace, the bedroom furnace is actually gonna be underneath the uh, bedroom closet right there. Tiffin's gone ahead and they, they mounted the TV at an angle. Right underneath right here is where you're gonna put your DVD player, home theater system. And then it has a splitter system that uh, Tiffin's been using. So if you, this Blu-ray player will go to all the TVs. If you put a satellite receiver, it'll go to all the TVs on HDMI input. Got more storage right there. And of course you do have a hamper. This hamper has laundry soap in it. Because, believe it or not, hidden right behind this door, they managed to get a washer and dryer in there. So that's not a combo unit. It's a dryer on top and a washer down below. So you actually have a, a really good laundry system on it. It doesn't have a bifold door that jams up on you. And more importantly, let's just say there was some sort of catastrophic failure because it's... It's very tight right here between the uh, the bed slot or the slide out and that ca cabinet. If it were to hit it, all it would do is open the door. So at least that's a little bit thinking. Guys, don't worry. We're just about done with the tour. Uh, the closet's a pretty ample closet. You can have uh, motion detector lights on, just or you can have them on all the time, or you can turn them off. It's pretty interesting too. I don't know if you guys can see right here. There's an AC inlet, so it takes air from in here, so it actually helps keep the, uh, the air in the closet pretty from getting stale and gross. Now, this weird-looking cushion, this is part of the bed setup for the dinette right here, so you won't be using this one very often. Well, all right, guys, that was the inside tour of this 2019 Allegro, Tiffin Allegro Red that we rebuilt from a very bad uh, situation. If you guys followed along, I really appreciate you going through this walkthrough with me. Uh, we'll go ahead and continue it on the outside. That being said, this is a beautiful coach. I'm pretty jealous of it. Let's go outside. All right, so with the inside done, let's go ahead and take a look at the outside. The outside, I always start right here at the beginning. So you can turn the entry step on and off right there. It's going to be, of course, for the entry step. Very standard entry step. Battery, this is basically the motorhome on-off switch. When you want to use a motorhome, you click it to the on position. When you're done, you're putting it into storage, you click it off. Now, you guys, if you've watched my video before, you know the patio awning control. Or the patio awning's right there. So I'll go out with it. Well, it's not a weather pro because it doesn't have a wind sensor, but check this out. It's got a light. It does have an LED light. So I can turn, uh, oh, that's right here. Uh, porch awning light. <laughs> So that's a really cool feature to have. Right above is the entry door awning. So you saw me put that on, sort of. We have a porch light and a door light. Tiffin goes ahead and, and they have, have a porch light right there and then a door light over the door. It's a really nice feature. Not every manufacturer does that. 
Uh, entry door. We have a diesel fuel on this side. Now, on this one, again, we have four slide outs, two on the passenger side and two on the driver's side. So in the patio area, it's gonna be one of the furnaces. So there are two furnaces. You have the outside TV. So this is gonna actually be hooked up to the inside Blu-ray player, which I don't have on right now. But if I were to go to TV, look at that, we got TV. Now, the first storage bay isn't really a storage bay. It's gonna be where the propane tank is. It's a really big propane tank right here. Because there's no, uh, has a water heater, a furnace, and a stove, but no refrigerator running off propane. Right here is the hydraulic system for the leveling, because this has a hydraulic leveling on it, automatic hydraulic leveling. You can see right there. Two of the slide outs are gonna be hydraulic also. This is HWH, they have it on a slider, so I can actually pull that and pull the whole thing out for servicing. But I don't wanna service this because I don't like working on hydraulics. But I don't want to service it because I really don't enjoy working on hydraulics, no matter what you might think. Now right in here. This is going to be your main storage bay. Now this is a short 30, I think it's a 33A. So it's a short diesel, so there's really not a lot of basement storage. This is the basement storage. It's pretty cool because these are LED lights and they have a little motion detector on it. So you can have it in motion detector mode so that... When it sees motion, it turns back on again. If we pull out right here, you can see you have 12 volt outlets, 110 outlets, and 110 outlets there. But they did at least put this on a slider so you can get it access to your, your items under here when it is, uh, when the slide out's out. In this compartment right here, this is a serv service door. You can actually fill up the gravity fill for the freshwater tank right there. But the freshwater tank and the holding tanks are all behind that door. You can see the overfill for the freshwater tank. And look at that. It's not rotten. Uh, again, this is a short diesel, so there's no tag axle. Just the standard drive axles. This is a 2019. So right in here is going to be where the engine batteries are. Two uh, group 31s. You don't have to service those. But what Tiffin does do is give you it's a chassis positive and negative. So you can actually hook up jumper cables right there if you need to jump start the engine. Of course, that's gonna be the battery disconnect for the engine batteries. A tiny little bit of storage right in this bay. And those are those dreaded uh, Schwintech slider uh, control modules. At least they're accessible. That, that's at least some good news. That's at least uh, something good, right? right? Here's gonna be where the water heater is. Now this is a direct spark ignition propane water heater but it also has a 110 heating element so you can make hot water using propane or electric suburban and it's a 10 gallon tank uh, right in here again a little bit of storage you have some diesel exhaust fluid you never can run out of that stuff this is going to be the uh, freight liner fuse box for the freight liner chassis itself so no storage in there so I'll try to make it make sense. This slide out, you can see, has that rack and pinion style. That's the Schwintech slide. This front one right here, I don't know if you can see, there's a, these are hydraulic, uh, hydraulic cylinder right there. I don't know if you can see it. So there's a hydraulic slide on the front one. So instead of the standard Tiffin where one half is uh, hydraulic and the other half is electric, the front slides are hydraulic and the rear slides are electric. So that's going to be the passenger side. We're going to go around to the back. You have a service inspection ladder. Pretty standard affair right there. And of course, you're going to have a big engine. Now, this has the. What does this one have on it? I think it's the uh, 350. Really, not too much to see back here because this is obviously a uh, rear diesel without a side discharge this is actually gonna be the radiator here engine oil fill transmission dipstick trans and uh, engine dipstick power steering fluid right here looks like i could add a little bit more coolant might do that real fast after i hit my head three more times so this roof we just have the two acs these are heat pumps there's a one-piece fiberglass roof 
we have a Weingard Traveler for Dish Network. Uh, about a 150 watt solar panel. We have a uh, fantastic vent for the galley. Fantastic vent for the bathroom. TV antenna. I think that's Wi-Fi repeater. Uh, skylight for the shower and then of course the other roof ACs back there. But a lot packed into a little area. What my son always likes to point out is these are like Kia Soul lights, as tail lights. I think it looks really good. Way up at the top right there is just going to be the uh, air intake for the engine. You have your rear furnace for the bedroom area, so that's propane again. And this door, tiny little storage compartment, that's about it. Right. All that's in there is going to be one of those floor mats for uh, when you're outside on the patio. Right. And in this compartment, that's going to be your short cord. The short cord has a built-in uh, transfer switch with surge protector on it, so you don't need an inline surge protector to plug into. That's just going to be the block heater for the engine. Uh, I think that's pretty much normal stuff. You have a little cradle to wrap up the shore cord in. Over in this is that dreaded DEF diesel exhaust fluid. So you have a gauge back here. You can only fill it up from the one side. DEF is just going to be a requirement uh, on basically every diesel, usually about 2010 and newer. Uh, it's not fun, but it does work. Just have to keep track of the... Uh, don't ever let the DEF go empty. That's my only advice for you. And then Tiffin added a, a, a pass-through right there so you can shut the door without having a hole. So it keeps more rodents out. Now behind this door is going to be your water bay. A lot going on in there. Uh, you can see this bedroom slide on the driver's side. That's going to be a Schwintec slide also. So you have a full house water filter right there. You have the wrench for it. You turn the water pump on and off right there. A 110 outlet on a GFCI. Uh, this is going to be your city water connection where you hook up to at a park or at your house. Park cable, sat portable satellite dish hookup. This is a water heater bypass for winterization. You can fill up the fresh water tank rather than taking the hose off here and dragging it to the other side. You can just hook up the city water connection right there. Move that to tank fill. Once the tank's full, go ahead and bring it back to city water or otherwise normal. That's how I like to consider it. Fresh water tank's going to be right there. You have the drain. This is just a shut off, so if you need to winterize, you can winterize and use a water pump for winterization. Nothing complicated. This one actually does have a black tank flush. That's a nice feature to have too. It's pretty well loaded. Look at that. They even gave you a place to coil up your water line and a paper towel holder. You know, those are only reserved for the most expensive motorhomes. Now the driver's side front slide out is going to be hydraulic also. You can see that hydraulic cylinder in here. That's just the other side of that basement storage. It does slide out this way also. So if I wanted to, I could open it up and slide it out to get out this way. Right above here is going to be the inverter. So this has a 2,000 watt, uh, yeah, 2,000 watt inverter, is it? Uh, yeah, MS2000. Magnum 2,000 watt inverter. Uh, down here, you do have a set of circuit breakers. Those are installed by Tiffin, just like it says right there. It is labeled what it's for. These buttons will pop out if they're tripped, push it back in to reset it. Obviously your house battery long-term disconnects right there and to disconnect the inverter. You just rotate that to the out position. So if you ever need to service the inverter, that's where you would go. It's another nice little feature that not many people are completely aware of. I sh probably shouldn't tell you that. But right here, these are the uh, 110 inputs and outputs on the inverter. So if this inverter were to die and you needed to bypass the inverter, rather than having to take the inverter apart and connect the wires together, you can actually disconnect those and plug them together and you would theoretically bypass the inverter. That's a really nice feature Tiffin does for you. And the last compartment right here isn't going to be that exciting. These are where the house batteries are. It's going to be four six volt batteries. It is on a slider, so you can just push that and slide the whole thing out. It does say don't let them freeze. It does say fully charged batteries will not freeze, and that is true. Check the water level on those at least every six months. So no storage whatsoever in here.
It'll bring us around to the front where all the major damage was. It's hard to remember what it used to look like because it looks so beautiful now. But we had to rebuild this entire front. Uh, I didn't clean up my mess in here and I apologize for that. There's some dust. Right here's gonna be your generator release. And if you were watching this video or this series, you would have seen that we had to rebuild this whole thing right in here. And again, these are 12 volt circuit breakers. It is labeled on this panel what everything's for. If they're tripped, push it back in to reset it. This is the other Freightliner fuse box. Again, that's from Freightliner itself. And you can fill it with diesel on this side too, so you can fill it from either side. Come around to the front. This is my nemesis. We had to rebuild this generator slide, rebuild the generator. But you know what? This thing looks really good. I'm really pleased with the way everything turned out. Got it all foamed up in there. And I can't say I agree with Tiffin's design to just have this front pop out instead of the generator. I don't know how that saved any time or money. I wish they'd go back to having the whole generator on the slide. But uh, Bob Tiffin didn't ask me that. And there's the big reveal on the front. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. I'm really pleased with the way it turned out. It was a lot more work than it should have been because of the transportation damage. But ultimately, I think this thing's back to looking like a nearly new RV. Whoo! So thanks a lot for going on this tour with me of this uh, 2019 Allegro Red. There is one thing more. Now some people might have kind of put it together based on uh, a video I made a few videos ago. But I'm really excited because we did a very extensive rebuild on this. And we need to make sure that it's actually going to work for somebody. And so what we need to do is take it on an extended type of uh, trip and make sure everything's working. So I, volu I volunteered to go ahead and take this motorhome on a two week cross country tour of the United States. So we're gonna head, my wife and I, we're gonna go from Arizona, make our way all the way through the South, up to, uh, through New Orleans, up to Tennessee. I have a good friend named Bob. He has an RV park, a, K a KOA campground in just outside Baileyton, Tennessee. And ironically, it's called Baileyton uh, KOA. And I want to go visit him. He's had that for well over 10 years. And I have not been able to, to visit him because I haven't had any time to do this. And this seems like the best opportunity to go visit him, test out in a motorhome, and uh, get some relaxation. I've been putting in pretty hard hours and I need a break. And last year, 2020, there wasn't anything we could do on vacation, so we didn't take a vacation. So I'm really excited to be able to say, if you guys want to, follow along with me. I'll try to make some travel videos, uh, let you know if we run into big issues with the, uh, the motorhome. Hopefully you won't see uh, me broke down on the side of the road. I'm, look, trust me, I understand how frustrating it is having an RV because I see the service side of it and I understand all you want to do is try to have a good time and be on vacation or experience a good good lifestyle and it's very frustrating when an RV breaks so I'm gonna be able to be on the other side of this from from this point where I'm gonna be stranded on the road or I'm gonna have problems go awry I'm gonna bring some tools with me so that hopefully I can fix problems uh, I'm not foolish enough to believe that there won't be problems but I'm really excited guys I'm going to have to uh, stop this video because I got to start loading this thing up for my vacation. And uh, two weeks is a long time. And I'm really excited. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. We've rebuilt. Of course, we did rebuild all right in here. And if you don't look too hard at it, it's not too bad. And of course, this didn't get damaged. The door got damaged, but the TV did not. We've massacred a few amount of bugs. She's going to try to get them. Ooh, it's a long one. 
Nice. Hey, I won't lie. This has been a pretty awkward uh, fuel pump. Between that station over there and then this handle I have to hold that on in order to have the pump go. But I'm gonna guess another $135 or so. So it's a beautiful morning here in Alamogordo. Absolutely gorgeous. I think I picked the right time to travel. Don't be jealous. Maybe a little bit.